Uh, hey everybody, welcome to the Daddy Issues podcast. Now we were, we are doing like a series recap of all the episodes, and this one's meant to be like the story of our relationship part two because that was the third episode, right? And we're now like way above. I don't know, it's the third episode of the second series, but we just kind of chatted shit, and so we spoke about me having like mild anger issues that are just about very minute things, then my shows and what happens at shows. And so if you've been at a show, I spoke about my recent gig in Lancaster. If you were there, then um come then you'll hopefully enjoy this episode. So to catch up, hope you enjoy it. Join the Patreon, subscribe to the podcast, check it out. It all really helps us out. Thank you so much. Here it is. Hello, Dad. Hi, how are you doing? Hello, everyone. So you, you were saying back. something before we... What do you I mean was back? Saying, you said, I, I... Go on. It's good to be back, isn't it, on the podcast? What do you mean, good to be back? Well, it's not like we've had a break. Well, it is. It's we did one a week a week ago. Yeah, but we. I suppose we haven't really spoken in the interim, so it's a week. Good to be back after a week. Should, you said it as if we'd had. had how, like how, long, how long? How long do you want to talk about this one? Should we I, do the entire no, episode on this? Yeah, we should. Uh, yeah. yeah, we should. No, go on. Okay, go let's on. argue about the nuances of it's good to be back. Okay, whether well, that's the right terminology. Anyway, I was just saying. So I went for a drink with my friend Mike last week i think it was last sunday and we were sort of talking about drinking and he said why don't you go the whole week five days without a drink and i said yeah i can do that and i literally have gone five days without a drink so wow that's, that's amazing and, and that's 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 being here because obviously it's very easy to go to a retreat or go away or take myself away and not drink but to do it at home so yeah that's pretty but the crazy thing is like i'm recently i've got these sort of embed especially i get pins and needles quite badly and I'd sort of sit up to get the blood back into my fingers. And I thought, God, this is, this is, and when you sort of Google it, it says, I don't know, it might be a liver issue or something like that, where it's liver, it's probably drink. And, uh, but that literally went, it went day one. Okay. Yeah. After not drinking. So I just said, okay, again, then I'm just watching my case. Cause I, I listened to myself. I listened to that podcast that you asked me to listen to. And uh, it wasn't as bad, but there was still a lot of okay. Are you going to keep okay. going then? Are you going to keep yeah, going? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, then Thomas. Yeah, that, that I actually, I I did, but I, I think I'm addicted to something else. Alcohol-free lager. I literally can't, I can't leave the stuff alone. Yeah, well, that's not, a lot of people say you shouldn't replace an addiction with another addiction, but I suppose it's a better thing to drink, obviously. Well, it's it's one thing is I don't get pins and needles. Okay, and I don't wake up the following morning with, with blurry eyesight. Okay, and, uh, and I, I kind of agree, but I think the problem is, is where you sort of go down the Alcoholics Anonymous route, where you can't walk down the alcohol aisle, you're not allowed to go to a pub, you can't drink under any other circumstances. That sounds a bit unrealistic and brutal. A good friend of mine who was a massive, massive addict, um, drinker, I mean, huge, colossal, he would sort of, he would go out with his girlfriend and just drink so much and part, it, once he literally passed out and his head fell into, on, into the plate that he was eating the food on. He literally <laughs> just straight down, just passed out. And uh, he used to take drugs too. And he went to Alcoholics Anonymous, stopped drinking. But actually, if you go out with him, he'll have a Bud Light. He'll, no, he'll, he'll have a Bud Blue. So he will drink non-alcoholic. Yeah. Um, but if you go to his house and take a bottle of wine, he'll ask you to take that bottle of wine with you if there's any left. Oh, really? So, yeah, yeah, because he doesn't want that. He would understand him. He wouldn't want that there. Well, he doesn't so trust think, him. He still doesn't trust himself. No, it's not trusting yourself. Why would you have alcohol if you're a non-drinker? Why? It's, it's, it would be a bit like having bullets... Okay, if you having bullets, if you if you are anti guns, why would you do that? You well, there's a guy bullets. at um, the group I go to, Alanon, that says his sons tried to bring alcohol into the house, and they he says no, you leave that outside. Well, it's understandable. Why why tempt someone? Uh, there's no. Well, but he's not a drinker. He just doesn't like because his dad was. I think his dad, mum died from alcoholism or something. So. Well, that's, that's, I mean, that's a bit extreme, but that's his view, isn't it? And that's if it's his house, then abide by his rules, I guess. Mm. But anyway, it's pretty hard for healthy to be addicted to Bud Blue or or something uh, zero than it is to. Well, I'm addicted to Coke. I drink Coke all the time, so I well, guess it's go, no then. different than yeah, no different. having an alcoholic drink. Funny enough, the guy we're talking about, he actually became his Achilles heel became coffee and Coke Zero. Yeah, everyone That's has it. something. And he would he would have masses of Coke Zero every day. But I think the thing is with alcohol, I guess it's a sugar level. And we kind of, because we're all addicted to processed sugar, 
we sort of so he probably substituted the alcohol the sugar and the alcohol with coke zero so he's he was still getting sort of sugar hit i'm guessing also also just the habit of having a drink you look forward to isn't it well it's quite nice in the evening sit down in the garden and a cup of tea doesn't quite cut it well i love having it like if i go if i do a gig i'll always always order a coke just you're, like but, coke. But, but you've always been a non-drinker so it's really yeah, but it's just a habit of having something that you yeah, enjoy but, but absolutely and it, but there's nothing wrong with that obviously if it's not affecting uh, coke's not going to affect you're not going to start beating your girlfriend on coke are you well, i do I mean, anyway you will <laughs> but that's a habit too maybe think about that <laughs> well i suppose if you're overweight you shouldn't drink coke Oh, the crazy thing too is, since I've been I've been fasting, so not fasting properly, but I I'll, I'll have maybe a couple of bananas a day and won't eat till the evening. And Jesus Christ, I can see my abs, Dom. That's I can good. actually see them. I know. It's mad. Have you been training? Yeah, yeah. I, I I do I I do pull ups in the morning. I do a quick routine in the morning before I go to work, but nothing other than that. Yeah, but I, I noticed I, I noticed on the bottom of my you know is it called bingo wings? Because the problem is where you work out consistently for the majority of your life and then you stop working out and all of a sudden that muscle turns into fat and i was thinking fucking hell you've got bingo wings mate you need to do something about that so they've gone anyway i think that was my that was my triceps was it oh, yeah. Yeah. under the bottom your bottom, triceps you... is there yeah yeah triceps yeah. i think it's triceps they turned into jelly so i've decided i'm gonna get a, an official autism test i've decided oh yeah yeah oh yeah you're oh, not yeah. gonna let this one go are you no and i know what it is is you and i've figured out with you and mum well, mum, definitely, because R- because Rory, your sister, my sister's kid, is, is so highly autistic. Yeah. Whenever I say I'm aut- I think I'm autistic, mum always compares me to him. But so I, I now Richard, feel like I have to, I now feel like I have to out autism other, Rory. Yeah, but Richard's other, you want to upstage him. Yeah, but upstage him, yeah. You know, no she, way, no she, way. She, he's, she's like, she's unless, like he's, unless, he's, unless he's a brilliant actor, um, so he can get exactly what he wants, that boy is just, very autistic no because she'll she'll be like oh yeah but Rory, you're not autistic because rory you know if you make a meal for rory he'll just throw it on the on the floor so yeah but he's also five years old that's the difference well you never free, free with your meals on the floor you never you never had a punch on no, i'm saying that's why i do that and smashing I'm, I'm, you know can, you never had a punch of smashing glasses or crockery i mean you, you knock them over all the time but other than that you didn't you, i never saw you get a, a glass out of the cup and just smash it on the floor but i could be autistic without being as autistic as him okay because he's he's like autistic to the point where it impairs his life, right? Yeah, because like yeah, he's he's registered. Yeah, he's registered disabled. Yeah, yeah. George well, has disabled badge. Because even George car. said she thinks I'm autistic. So you... fuck you. Okay, and do your autistic test and prove me wrong. And well, I've been doing online. Go, what do you doing... get? Do you do you get a certificate or something? So you can I get say, a free laptop. You... Do you? Yeah. Do you? Yeah, I would do for uni. Wow, then just definitely do that. I've been Maybe doing just... online tests and smashing them out the park. Have you? Yeah. You're, you're seeing this as a bit of a trophy, aren't you? I'm not sure it is. No, I just want to, because I've always thought I could be, so I want a clarification, you know? Will that help you? Uh, Well, I like to do jokes about it, but I've been doing that okay. anyway. Okay. So if you've got a test that you can then do, officially do jokes, is that why you want to do it? Yeah. It's a bit like it's about like being black. Black people obviously make jokes about black people, but white people can't do that because that would be sort of. Yeah, but racist. black people don't have to get tested if they're black or not, do they? No, that's just no. quite clear. It's quite apparent. So anyway, we um, the we're doing another recap episode, and and the episode was um titled, the last one, the story of our relationship. But we didn't really speak about. We just spoke about shit, really. Did you not think? Yeah, I I thought it was I like most of them. When I listen back to them after doing the podcast, they always think "Mm, not sure about that. When I listen back to them, they're always I always find them quite entertaining. I think you're it's 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 quite interesting, and some of the sort of anecdotes or the or the I don't know the dry humor and so on and so forth comparisons they always amuse me. They tickle me. Mm. I I never thought it would sound so good. I always thought it'd be a bit shit. Yeah. That's not really what no. I'm asking. Um, sorry, what's the question? Well, There's a wanna... question there somewhere. Yeah, because you're meant to go over and ask me my opinion of that time, but the thing is, we didn't really speak about any particular time. The problem was, it was so varied. Yeah. It was it was peppered with uh, Dave and how Dave ran his calendar. He was a very good time manager, which I thought was very funny. 
and obviously you getting money from your mum for your lunch uh and mm. that situation and I, I think we were going across over sort of how grounded you were it's I suppose I suppose what for me came out of that is we spend a lot of time in our heads believing that our feelings come from the world as opposed to believing our feelings come from us and we're absolutely convinced that the feelings come from the world or other people or and um, but they don't and you're kind of testament to the fact that you don't get you don't get uh off-centered very much by things that happen around you and even if you do you talk about it in such a for example like your last employer you talk about it in such a calm way so composed it's it's almost it's almost that you could be talking about someone else or or you don't get emotional you don't get what a fucking cunt what an arsehole okay you know he, he did this he did that i'm furious and so on and so forth whereas i get a lot more passionate i get quite i get quite pissed off about things even though i know it's in my head so i have to kind of tell myself that because but, i think i do get quite off center actually but you don't need like there because... was these i was on the train it always happens on the train i was on the train last weekend going to london and there was the i was in the quiet carriage reserved a seat there specifically and then this woman well young 20 year old woman so that takes a phone call which you're not allowed to do in a quiet carriage right? no and it's to her friend and she's like i'll see you in 10 minutes i'm thinking what the fuck and this old woman who just got on the train is like <gasps> sat down on her table she's like oh, i'm just gonna sit here for a minute and recover and the girl was oh you can but my friends are joining me in a minute so just what so you know. and then three two really of her, two of her mates get on and they're just having a fucking catch-up on the quiet carriage Wow, do you say anything? Well, do you know what? They they clearly weren't making an effort to be quiet, and I thought yeah. there's three girls, and I thought what I'm gonna if I was figure out in my head, I was like, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, look, I'm not meaning to be a dick, but you do realize this is the quiet carriage. Like, Actually, no, I don't want to say dick because dick's a confrontational word. Yeah, so I was gonna say, look, I'm not meaning to be rude, but then I thought, what what's what's gonna happen here? Because what I would like for them to do is move, right? They're probably not gonna do that. Second option is they're going to sit there in silence, awkwardly hating me. So I just thought... Yeah, that'd, that'd be fine, but sometimes I think there's a guy who... Because I was um, sat like literally opposite them, you know? Well, a situation, a situation, similar situation where you get pissed off. So this guy who used to work for me on my last project became available, bricklayer, and I thought, oh, brilliant, because he can rebuild my steps, which, are, which I've taken apart, uh, going down to the basement. And he started he, he sort of he was his hours were a bit intermittent and he had a really nice job on the on the two sort of left and right hand side wall but when he came to building steps uh i came back and you had so you had they were he'd, he'd measured them in bricks so it was two bricks two bricks two bricks three bricks three bricks i said martin you can't have inconsistently high steps you can't have two bricks and then three bricks that's not going to work is it mate uh, and anyway kind of you know paid him up argued about his hours which he tried to claim far more far more hours than he'd actually done which pissed me off anyway because to me it's just that's about as close to theft as you can get really if you yeah. still if you if you steal goods from someone or still trying to steal time it's still the same thing but i took it apart yesterday and the workmanship on these steps was absolutely fucking shocking so i said to amy i said send him i said take a photograph of that and send him a message and she said oh no there's no point da, 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 da. i said no it will make me feel better mm. it will cleanse me so she composed a small message, and I think, uh, and then sent another one saying, "Thanks for thanks thanks for thanks for shafting us over." And I thought, can I feel better now? Mm. So it, it sometimes, even though I know it'll make no difference to him, he read it. She said, and hopefully it will. Hopefully it will slightly it'll slightly contaminate his life. He didn't respond. So, no, I didn't want him to. But it, it, but these things, if you if you let someone, I mean, I've never had a message sent to me saying your work is shocking. You should be ashamed of yourself, or worse, the words of fact. If I did, I'd carry that. I would yeah. carry that into my future life without a doubt. I would, I would feel like less of a person, let someone down, and so on and so forth. But he might be immune to it. But I think the point is sometimes making your point, even though there's no point making your point as far as you think they're concerned for you. I think it's a bit like the cinema thing. If I if I because I've gone up to a few people in the cinema and said, Can you please be quiet? And you go up, uh, you go they, up to it, a few people in the cinema per time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or can you stop using They think your phone? you're checking the tickets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but regardless. But the point is, if I don't do that, that kind of makes me a bit of a pussy. 
don't bemoan her. If there's something in life, it's Eckhart Tolle, he's quite enlightened. And he says a majority of things in life you can't change. So there's no point. If you're at a traffic light okay, and you're you're late to go to where you want to go to uh, and you're getting frustrated, oh, come on, lights, change. Come on, lights, I need to get to, to there. You are literally getting yourself in a state for nothing because mm. those lights don't hear you and you can't change that. You can't change that situation. However, on the same note or different note, he says, if you're in a restaurant, for example, on the way to bring you cold food, you'd politely call the waiter over and say, excuse me, waiter, my food's cold. Would you mind heating it up or bring me a new meal? If you can change that, then change it. So yeah. I think I think from a self-respect thing, but the way to do it is, like you were saying, don't use dick. It's the the way to be, I think, most most civil, competent, and also stand up for yourself is to be very polite and and very neutral about the situation. I don't know, for example, as you say, for example, I don't know, girls, um, it's a quiet carriage. I, I'm finding it hard to concentrate. Would you mind being a little bit quieter? Or maybe even if you want to make noise moving to another yeah. carriage where you don't, don't have to be quiet. So you could put it in a nice way. Because you're not allowed to talk on the quiet carriage at all, are you? Not as far as I know, no. Yeah. So maybe they weren't aware. It's again... She yeah, but might, the thing is, she was, on, she was on the phone and there was a no phone sign, literally. But she might not have been aware. She she could have been oblivious to that. Yeah. So you might you might have actually done she if she realized actually the flip side is we always think a no is a bad thing for people, but often um it's not a bad thing because for example, if I said, Oh sorry, I can't be there tomorrow, they might say, Oh, that's brilliant because I had to cancel such and such for that. So the following day is better. So a no might be a really good solution for everyone. You just always assume that a no to anyone is going to be bad. We've in fact we are we are absolutely socially programmed to only say yes. And we hate saying no. And we hate, for example, you're quite good at it. Conversations about money. I hate asking for money. I hate money conversations. I don't know whether it's English or whether it's it's some sort of deep-seated insecurity, but we are petrified about I mean, there are books on, there are literally books, self-development books on saying no. So that that so that no one would write a book on saying no if it wasn't a problem, would they? They I I didn't, I just moved. Well, what I did was I went and checked. If there was another table that I could sit on, on another carriage, and I just moved. Do you not find it hard to say no? No. <laughs> well, most people do. They find it really difficult to say no. Sometimes if there's someone that I know, like, that I know is very valuable to me, uh -huh. if they ask me to do something for them, I struggle to say no. But then I know it's an investment in time that I'll get something back from eventually. Did I tell you, I've probably done another previous podcast. This guy was, was there's a documentary or small film or something, and he was exploring how hard it would be to get people to say no. So he went into a restaurant, completely true, saw it, and uh, he had a free course meal with wine, and then he turned around to the table behind him. He said, excuse me, uh, I've, uh, I haven't got my wallet. Would you mind paying for my food? And I think the first person made an excuse, but they were... They were kind of, they kind of were close to saying yes. The second table paid for it. Yeah. So that's how hard people find it to say no. I'd say no to that. Yeah, but you. I'd I say guess, no. You can fuck off. But the, I think the point is, you might get to a person or way said, well, you know, I'll transfer the money back tomorrow. Or if they said, well, if you can, if you can transfer me the money back, that'd be great, or something like that. But I, I, don't, I can't remember the interaction, but it may have been something like that. But he got the second table to say yes, which is amazing. He probably gave them the money, didn't he? In the end of it, yeah, yeah, I don't. Yeah. I'm not sure. Maybe at the end, but if you look at, for example, girls and bars, girls are notorious for getting free drinks. Yeah, but what's that's not relevant to that. Well, it kind of is in the respect because that... the, the reason they do that is for a gain. The men do that for a gain to themselves, hopefully. Well, they do, they do. But if a woman, for example, came up to the majority of men and said, "Oh, excuse me, uh, I'm out with friends. I've lost my money. Could you buy me a drink?" They'd probably say, "Yeah." Yeah, but again, they'd be thinking of a game. They would. They would. They would expect them to at least have a conversation with them off the back of that. Yeah. So yeah. they're buying some chat. Yeah. Yeah. So that's not for no. Whereas that meal thing is for no gain. You know. No gain at all. Um, Absolutely. That's, well, they, they would might... have just. They would have just said yes out of embarrassment. Yeah. Or sort Completely. Of yeah. So I'm not. I don't think I'm that centered. Really. And then I was watching. Um. <laughs> I watched the Equalizer, the new Equalizer, the other day. Oh, is it out? What, yeah, in, in the, the cinema. cinema. It's good. Is it, is it good? And, um, Denzel Washington. Yeah, and there was this guy chatting, 
And I was thinking, mate, if you don't stop talking, I'm going to do what he's doing to those fucking mafia. Did you? To you, yeah. I'm going to do like, some crap on him. Kill every single person in the cinema in nine Did you seconds. You're not just going to say, excuse me, can you be quiet, please? No, because they were talking very, they talk for like a few seconds every like mm. 10 minutes. Which mm. was no so it's too hard, too hard, too hard to track them down. Well, no, they were, the right, you... they were like a few seats along from me, but I just thought I can't be fair. Because it's quite a lot of mental capacity for me to go and do that. I agree. So I, I, that's why I think, but I, I could say, because I hate going to the cinema and having, invariably, it'd be someone sat behind me with one of those fucking bags, like a crisp bag. Oh, there was someone so with a much huge noise. bag, but you can't really complain oh, about gee, that. Well, though. you can't. I know, but you think, why do you sell this shit? Why can't you sell it in a plastic bag that makes yeah. no noise or nachos or some? And how do they make them last the entire three fucking hours? That's what <laughs> I want to know too. I, if I had a pack of walkers, even even family size, I'd match through them in five minutes. These fuckers, and they're not small. Okay, are, are they? They? I think they do it deliberately. They, they were also by, they were also quite they always young. Sit behind, sit behind and me, phones. and they always and they always make sure that bag lasts at least the entire time scale of that film i actually think when i go to the cinema i think i, I should stop going to the cinema because yeah it just causes too expensive. much stress for me yeah i agree i agree it's, wait, like, it's a tenner for a ticket yeah but even know. so wait wait for it to come out of home yeah it just causes too much stress for me i just think i want everyone in the cinema to die on the way home i think that's that's how i used to feel i just used to get so fucking angry and i'm thinking you're getting yourself in such a stress and i say oh, yeah 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 you're in your head da 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 but being in your head and that person munching almost it, feel, it, it actually feels like they they've got their mouth three inches away from you. And I also cannot, you know, there's some things that I think people are hypersensitive to. I cannot stand the sound of people eating. If I'm yeah, eating, annoying. that's fine. I cannot stand it. If I'm not eating and someone's eating, I, I can't hear it. I just, I, it's, it's a noise I find just absolutely horrible. Yeah. A bit like when, when that screeching where we used to have blackboards and that, that screeching of blackboards or chairs being slid across the floor. I can't stand it. Hold on. Um, but one thing I talk of the, but talking of Denzel Washington, I was just rewatching flight. Do you remember that film? Yes. Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. And, uh, but it's funny because I think the lawyer said to him, he said, you've got to stop drinking. And he said, classically. And I thought, yeah, that, it, that sort of rings true. He said, we can get you some help. And at that point, he should have gone, yeah, definitely get me some help. But he said, no, 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 no. I can crack this on my own. And you think, God, how many drinkers have said that? No, I can do this on my own. Yeah. Just, I thought, yeah. Sounds sort of reminiscent deja vu. Yeah, he, um, so I get very annoyed about small, tiny things like that. Um, mm -hmm. But then bigger hey, things. I don't, well, I don't, I never okay really. With take stuff for that person well like for example yesterday my flat me and my flatmate have the same pair of shoes yeah <laughs> and i thought he'd taken my shoes did you and i was furious especially he's fucking taking my piece of shoe. <laughs> well without without saying anything shoes. i know how you make how you make these assumptions and then I, don't you i messaged him and he goes what size shoe are you i said nine he goes well i'm 11 so i haven't taken your shoes don't know okay <laughs> what did you did you accuse him of taking your shoes yeah i rung him <laughs> did you what did you yeah. say well, I'll, I'll read it to you, actually. So this is your brand new flat, mate, where you just moved oh, no, into we're, flat. No, we're, we're, we're mates. Like, okay. Yeah. We hang out a lot. I go, um, <laughs> I go, man, are you wearing my shoes? Call him. He doesn't answer. You're definitely wearing my shoes because mine have a patch on the inside. That's disgusting. <laughs> when are you back? Please look out for the patch on the shoe and never do it again. <laughs> Did you? Quite confrontational, then. Jesus. Well, I was just getting so irritated. And yeah, he said, he said, you, I'm size 11. He run me and said, I'm not wearing your shoes. I'm like, All right. Okay. Because if he was, that would have been something that annoys me. What annoys me is people being inconsiderate. That annoys well, me. yeah, I mean, obviously taking your shoes would be pretty brazen and pretty cheeky. But he would have done it by um, mistake because they're the same pair. Okay, so you exactly, thought exactly okay, you same. thought so you thought he's got the same shoes as me and he's mm. taken mine by mistake. Yeah. Like, but he's an 11. Because mine have a adhesive patch on the inside because there's plastic coming out. Okay. And that but didn't you, have it on he, there. He's a size 11. Yeah, but I didn't know that. So you, so you feel like a bit of a dickhead now, do you? Well, no, we just laughed about it. But okay. that that's something like it really. Like I was driving, I had a 40-minute drive, and at least 20 minutes of it I was well, you occupied, like fuming, yeah. absolutely yeah, yeah, fuming. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can't, you can't turn your head off. It's bizarre, isn't it? You can't until you, he, you until he rung me and said, they're not your shoes. It's oh. crazy. I've let it go sometimes. I literally, I wake up in bed at night with 
sometimes you know in the early hours of the morning with with a gripe thinking oh, i'm so fucked off about that and i you have to sort of but then then i i have to move myself past it and then when you move yourself past it you think what the fuck was that about that was irrelevant but i've been trying to change my attitude recently because i especially with people because some if i turn up to a show and the show is not a good show you know and i know it's going to be difficult and it's all bad like last night i did a show and there was 250 people well there and guess how many people they had on the bar working on the bar two three Wow, that's crazy. So the show is meant to start at half seven. Eight o'clock, there's still people at the bar. Right? Yeah. And I'm comparing. So I've basically got to go out there for two minutes and just take shit whilst everyone's ordering their drinks. Yeah. And I just was getting, as I said, look, I, I was like, look, guys, you've all paid £18 for a ticket. If you talk, you're ruining the show for everyone else. Stop being a selfish prick and did watch you? the show. Yeah. Um, did, did that work? Well, it did, and then they just carry. There was no discipline, so they just they were at go on, and they just carry on again. But um, right. so, but I used to get to these shows and go, "Fucking hell, why am I doing this? It's fucking shit, such a shit show, and I shouldn't be doing shows like this." And fucking hell, but now I just treat it. And also, when people try to talk to me after the show, I get really annoyed. Do you? So I don't want to talk to you. You can't. So what you get? What so? What's your normal? What's your normal routine? You'll do the show, then go to the bar and get yourself a coke, and then no, I do the chill. show, and then I'll leave immediately, or I'll stay no, in the no, green what room. You, previously so who would try and talk to you then not, mem- not members, members. Of the... yeah so how would they do that then so how would they get to you so you must have gone out and, and ordered well, a, a lot or... of shows you have to walk through to get out right if there's and not a backstage area yeah well they would just do... what would they say to you well gem um sometimes they'll just try well, what annoys me if they say oh man that was good good job that's okay but then yeah. if they come up to you and say that and then they just stay there and expect you to have a chat with them that's slightly yeah. annoying. Because then it's like when, because I'm, I'm, I'm a drained, you know, I want to go home. I saw actually one really clever person kind of dealing with it. Obviously, it wasn't true. But in the morning show, Steve Carell, when he was out, uh, I don't know, it, he was sort of staying away on location and he was walking through a town and every so often people would recognize him and just shake their hand yeah. and then walk off. I just thought that was brilliant. Because it was really, do, yeah. it was it was really polite. It was really respectful. It wasn't. He wasn't it being bullshit. I remember, God, there used to be this children's thing called Blue Peter, and one of the presenters, obviously, you know, they, it's it was aimed at for kids between probably seven and fourteen, and there was one presenter called Peter Purvis, and it sounds a bit strange actually, but I think he was out once you know sort of i don't know bloody uh, in his own time and someone came up to him and asked for his autograph and he told them to piss off and you think really <laughs> you just you can't do that that's it, is a, it is annoying though that's it might be annoying but that's the what that's what you've picked you pick that business True. if you pick that business then that's what you're going to get otherwise work in a library or 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 a mortuary or somewhere where you're not going to see people but now do you know what it is so i did a on Saturday, no Friday, I did a gig in Lancaster, and I was headlining. Right, so it's thirty minutes at the end, mm-hmm. and there was it was in a hotel, about twenty people. Not a good gig, you know, not not an environment for laughter. They were all really right. old, yeah. and I got then I thought, oh, this is going to go fucking terribly. Yeah, these guys are pieces of shit, and I was headlining, you know, it's a bit of pressure, and mm-hmm. then I got and I just thought, actually, no, these people are all here for a show. They're all being nice. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make them my friends. Yeah. And I've been making an effort to really look into the audience's eyes when I'm on stage recently. Yeah. And I've also been, so when I'm doing a longer set, I will, I'll speak to the audience quite a lot because for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you can't just do jokes. It's you just... got to, you got so, to, they all do. And I had a really great time. And what my attitude, I've been trying to think of, because you know what, when I think I can get something from someone, I'm really nice to them mm-hmm. when they can give me something. But then I thought actually probably every single person can give me something. You know, the, but they, it's every single person probably has some value to offer me. Would the, surely they do if they're an audience member? Because without the audience, what the fuck would you be doing there? Mm. The only reason you get up there, otherwise, why don't you just perform to a chair? Yeah, but that's a just into people in general. So that's really helped my attitude, actually. And then if people want to chat, like if people look at me after, I'll get look. I've been look, looking people in the eye, and it's helping a lot, actually. Um, yeah. Then there was That's a guy good. guy yesterday. That, I think uh, I think you just do that. You walk through, you shake their hand, you say, "I really appreciate that." Okay, and the, but you, it's when you look at Steve, well, he just walked off. Mm. You didn't. He was really respectful, but he smiled at them. 
uh, didn't interact, didn't engage, but you thought, God, that's a really nice way to say hello to someone without then becoming sort of uh, hijacked with with a conversation you might not want. But I've enjoyed bringing the audience, and I'm quite good at it actually. I didn't think I was that good. At it, you I'm said well, well, I always I always got confused about that, a little bit disappointed, because when we look at looked at that guy in Exeter. Who you, Jamali Maddox. Yeah, and he all he did pretty much was, apart from talk about his life, which was pretty funny, all he did was talk to the audience. He mm. was he involved with them all the time. And when, you, <clears throat> when you said that you sort of didn't do that too much, I'm thinking, you're missing a fucking shitload of Well, material. it's because I wasn't good enough at the time, but now okay. I am, I reckon. Got it. Um, but there was a guy yesterday, I was wearing like a floral shirt, like a... Um, like a, you know, like a summer shirt. Yeah. And I I was doing a joke about a bisexual, and I said, any bisexuals? And he made a comment about my shirt. He went like, I can see your shirts. And I went, yeah, everyone can, mate. It's not, this isn't a blind gig. Um, <laughs> and then um, he said something to me. He kept heckling me. I said, oh, mate, and we're not going to be mean to you, you know, because you might be having a bad day. Like, you might have had a bad day, or maybe you just forgot your helmet. And <laughs> so I said that. And then I said, not all disabilities are visible. So that annoys me when people are, when I have to be mean to someone. That pisses uh-huh. me off. But he was just a twat. But do you not know, think some people like being, they expect you being mean to them. They kind of, they almost like you know, that. No, that's not I comedy, always... is it? Because the well, thing I is, think... I, I insult him and he goes, hey, it's like, no, that's not. It can be. If it's, it's not, funny. That's not what cause... I want to do. No, but it's part of it, isn't it? It's part of what you do. And he was trying to derail me because he kept okay. coming back. Like he was trying to ruin it. Uh-huh. That there was mal- malice behind it, but you always get dickheads, don't you? Who, who I don't know, who just for some in some way get some pleasure from from if they might feel that oh, if they can sort of upstage you or or come back with a with a or or, or God forbid you go off crying or something like that, that that what they'd feel better or superior. I don't know. Fuck knows. So yeah, that that but the point is that 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 stuff does off center me, but I don't know. You seem to think I'm really calm and, and centered. You are calm, but I think again. But the only way you can come back is to be composed, and um, because you've got milliseconds to think about that, haven't you? I mean, literally, you have a, you, if you had a time delay, if you, for example, were quiet for three seconds, I mean, let's do that. It looks weak, doesn't it? We go one thousand, two thousand, three thousand. Fucking three seconds is an eternity. Ten seconds, five seconds. Jesus, that's like a week. Okay, of normal life, so you can't hesitate. No, it's got to be like straight back for something. It just amazes me, but there's got to be something analytically in your head that's thinking, right, come back with that. You you wouldn't even think about it. No, so. no, I have line. I have lines that I would say. Right. So that helmet, that helmet thing. I've said that before. Okay, fine. So you got yeah. you got you you got your script to come back. Well, just from doing it so much, you just know what to say. Well, that's good. Yeah, but then he just kept coming at me, so I decided I'm just going to leave it. Because everyone else was hating it as well, like him mm. doing that. Mm. So that annoys me. The music stuff annoys me. Um, yeah, I just get worked up about small things. Well, that's but, normal, isn't it? It's not. When well, there's still going to be, there's still be bits and pieces. It's we live in a thought based reality. That's mm. how it is. But we we just often forget that it seems so real. If it didn't seem real, we wouldn't believe it. But it's a thought-based reality, but it seems incredibly real. And because it feels so real, we fall for it. But it's not real, is it? It's only I'm thoughts. just going to blame it on the autism. Fine, keep doing that. <laughs> Let's wait for the test. So we need to go now, but we um we didn't talk about our, the story of our relationship. We'll do that next time. Yeah, we'll do that next time. So if you can get some stuff. I think like your mum said, about. she said, what did she say? Um, It's not so much... Daddy talk, it's more used to talk shit. Just talk now, shit. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but enjoy yeah. it, you know. Hopefully That's good. Are enjoying it I think we talk shit very well. Yeah. All right, Dad. Um, okay. Cool. See you next time, everybody. Bye bye. See you next time. Thanks for listening. Bye. Well, there it is. Another episode of the Daddy Issues podcast done. And uh, like I said, it was just a catch up. That's all it was. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next week again. Please join the Patreon. It helps so, so, so much. I post not just the podcast on there, I do like uh longer episodes of the podcast i do that i post my stand-up clips on there loads of stuff goes on there so please check it out thank you so much bye-bye